So I've had the Gerson MC312 Sport shotgun from our good friends at uh, European American Armory for a while now. I want to add a extension to the mag tube on this thing. Um, and it's not terribly difficult to do, but there are some things that you want to look out for if you're doing that. Today, that's what we're going to talk about. So let's go. What's up, crew? It's Chris from CloverTac. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, uh, anytime we're doing cleaning, maintenance, repair, that sort of thing, make sure our firearms are clear and we have no live ammunition in the general area. Now with a magazine tube extension, important to note, uh, it does not affect the function of the firearm. In this case, we're talking a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun. It will still be a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun once we're done. Uh, I think a lot of people like the extended tubes for the aesthetic look. When you're talking about a longer barreled shotgun, especially having that tube come out a little bit further, just sort of balances things out and extended tubes are practical as well, especially in the competition world, because that does allow you to typically hold a few more shells than you normally would with just the bone stock magazine tube. But as far as the Gerson MC312 goes, the uh, entire 312 series, not just the Sport, uh, it should be Remington 870, Remington 1100 threads on the mag tube. That part is super simple and super easy, but there's a few things if you do pick up a Remington 870 extension uh, that you're possibly going to have to do today. We're specifically looking at the Carlson extension tubes, and so I found that there are a few things we've got to do. So uh, we've done checked everything for clear. We're going to back off the end cap, the tube nut, whatever you want to call it here. Right away compared to the nut on the Carlson, uh, you'll notice this is uh, considerably longer. Here's the nut on the Carlson, considerably longer. That's something that we definitely have to contend with. But we want to get the barrel and all that stuff out of the way because we're not going to need that. Now you've got obviously a follower in this tube, you've got a spring, and you've got a, uh, I guess it would be a snap ring or something like that, I guess is what you call it, uh, in the end. And now you need to be careful when uh, you try to take this out, the spring is gonna be under pressure. Notice I'm wearing glasses. Yes, these are safety rated lenses. Uh, and I recommend that anytime you're doing cleaning, maintenance, repair, and you're messing around with springs. So you're gonna need some snap ring pliers for this. Uh, and you're just gonna get those snap ring pliers down and we're going to attempt to pull this puppy out ever so carefully, because again, it will go all over the place. I do have it out and I will uh, show you everything once I get this out. Notice that spring popped on me, that's gonna happen. Uh, there's the big honking spring. And this snap ring is sort of unique in this croissant. It's not just a snap ring. It's actually a, uh, what would that be? Like a cup design that goes over the end of the spring. So you want to be aware of that when you're taking all of that out. Once you get that out, it's a matter of getting that follower out. There's the stock follower. Get that to the side and... Now we're ready to go to work. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the Carlson follower here and uh, just slide it down that mag tube and make sure that it slides freely. That seems to be good. I'm able to drop it one way, slide it the other. It comes right out. If it doesn't slide freely down the tube, then what you may wanna do, at least what I do, uh, is if you've got, I think, a half inch uh, drill or drill press, you can chuck this thing, this end up in that drill and use some, some sandpaper or a file. Now you want to finish off with a fine grit uh, sandpaper or a fine grit file so that the sides of this are smooth. If you use a rough grit, uh, then it's potentially going to be rough and grab as it's sliding up and down the tube. But uh, just be aware of that. Now, the next thing that we've got to check out here 
Uh, and I've got a little bit of a contraption over here. We'll take a look at this. This is my uh, vise for my drill press. And you'll notice that I have some wood blocks here. And it's just some wood blocks that I cut or drilled rather a hole through, cut that thing in half. That allows me to clamp in a vise around something round. Um, you can also tape up whatever you're clamping uh, to make sure that you don't scar it. What you need to do in this situation with the Gerson MC312 is you need to take your extension and the nut here and the tube itself are they're probably going to be loctited into place and so you might be able to break them loose by hand if you can't. Uh, you can build a little fixture like this or you may already have one uh, to be able to hold that tube, tighten everything up. Maybe then you can do it by hand. Uh, if not, then uh, just a good old fashioned pair of uh, channel locks, pair of pliers there. Uh, I would advise wrapping tape or wrapping something around this nut uh, so that you don't damage the finish. Um, again, odds are you're probably not going to with the wood block, but there is a reason at least the first time that you install this, that you're gonna to wanna to separate these pieces in my opinion. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more here in a second. Let's get this out of the way because don't need that in the way anymore. And you'll notice I have a little piece sitting here. So I mentioned earlier the difference in the height uh, between the Carlson nut and the stock Gerson nut. Um, we need to be able to have a way to make up the difference. Now, I'm told by European American Armory that these Gerson M3, MC312s, if I can speak, um, are shipping with an adapter to make up that uh, difference. Now, if you pick up one used, or uh, in the case of mine, it did not come with one, it's really easy to make an adapter. You just need a 3 8 inch wide piece of one inch Schedule 40 PVC. Um, it's not imperative that it is um, three-eighths of an inch. It could be a little bit more. Uh, and you want to make sure that it's a maybe a little more rather than a little less. I wouldn't go any less, so maybe cut it a little bit large if you're unsure. The biggest thing is to make sure it's as close as possible to three-eighths inch all the way around. And, of course, I painted this one black. And that's the reason that we separated the tube from the nut on the Carlson extension is because once we add this spacer into play, it could potentially change where this extension tube sits. So we want to be able to screw this down in relation to that spacer. Now we can start going back together with this thing because we do not have that keeper nut or a keeper snap ring in there anymore. We are going to have to put the handguard barrel assembly back in there and kind of work from that. So let's put our follower in, uh, big side of course down. Again, making sure everything's smooth. Let's go ahead and put our little uh, spacer we made over that threaded area. And we're gonna take the upgraded barrel nut and we're gonna tighten that down. Now, barrel nuts on these shotguns, barrel nuts, the magazine end cap nut are usually knurled so they kind of have a grab to them and they lock into place. And you may be wondering, well, if I tighten this thing down and it doesn't have those knurls, is it gonna come loose? And I'll explain that uh, a little later. The answer to that is no. So I've got all that in place and you can tell that uh, the barrel and everything is tight. So at this point, we're ready to start putting our spring back in. This is the spring that came with that extended tube. So we put that spring into place, we take our upgraded tube here, and then we just start walking that spring down a few coils at a time until we can get, if you can see that, <laughs> we get the extension tube into place, and then just start tightening that extension tube piece up like so. And again, the reason you want to do it in this order, at least the first time, is because we've got that spacer. And I don't know if you can tell, but there you go. You can't even tell that spacer is there. So it uh, works out really good. Make sure you get that 
good and as hand tight as you can. Again, it's not going to be able to back out regardless. And the reason is you've got a clamp here. So let's take our little clamp. This clamps the tube to the barrel, keeps everything into place. And, and obviously once you do that, uh, there's no way it's going to back out. Now, when you're looking at this clamp, you've got uh, a big side and a small side. Make sure that the big side goes to the magazine tube. And for me, I like to put the clamp, usually, uh, if I've got a vent ribbed barrel, this is a vent rib, uh, I like to put the clamp somewhere in the center of, depending on the length of the extension, in the center of that second rib down. Tighten that puppy down. So just running through a function test now. Kind of make sure everything extracts like it should. And everything seemed to go in and out just fine. Wasn't an issue. Let's uh, load up these six rounds and we'll fire them and make sure that everything is gonna function. Obviously safety is paramount. <laughs> gonna get my ears on again. The uh, glasses I'm wearing today are my everyday wear pair of Hunter's HD Gold safety lenses. So while they may not look like safety glasses, the uh, lenses are safety rated. So here we go. We're going to have three of the two and three quarter inch first uh, and then follow that up with three of the three inch shells. Hopefully everything cycles fine, ejects and does what it needs to do. I do like the look. Here we go. If you have any questions moving forward about anything that you've seen in this video, by all means, hit me up down in the comments below. If you're looking for more content on shotguns, specifically the Gerson MC312 Sport, I've got you some stuff locked and loaded right over here. As for this one, we're done. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And until next time, don't forget to chain fire freedom.